Hey guys, it's Martin again, and today we are going to talk about ruptures in the therapeutic alliance, a concept that has great clinical implications and also empirical evidence to support it. As we always tell you, if you like this video, it would be great if you can share with your friends and colleagues, uh, if you can like it in YouTube, and also, of course, if you can subscribe to our channel. So, um, to start talking about ruptures, first we need to talk a bit about the therapeutic alliance. The alliance is defined as the relationship of collaboration between patient and therapist, um, integrated usually by three different dimensions. First, the emotional bond between patient and therapist, and second, the degree of agreement they have regarding the, task, the tasks of the treatment and the goals of the therapy. Um, the Therapeutic Alliance has been one of the most studied constructs uh, in psychotherapy research because this has been related to psychotherapy outcome. For example, in a study we have conducted a couple of years ago, um, we found that uh, both the general level of alliance during the whole treatment and also increases of the strength of the alliance during therapy were related to better outcome in different uh, cognitive therapists for depression. In a meta-analysis uh, recently conducted by Flukiger and colleagues where they synthesized hundreds of studies, of empirical studies, uh, they found that the therapeutic alliance is a robust predictor of psychotherapy outcome regardless uh, patient's diagnosis, uh, treatment conditions, and even adjusting for different baseline characteristics of the patients. So this is the main evidence regarding therapeutic alliance as a fundamental uh, predictor of outcome. However, here the question that raised is what happened when the alliance is weak? What happened when there are problems in the therapeutic alliance and how we deal with those problems? Here is where Safran and colleagues um, created the construct of uh, ruptures and resolutions in the alliance. The ruptures are considered uh, moments where the um, process of collaboration between patient and therapist is interrupt and where the therapist needs to do something in order to solve those situations, in order to continue with the treatment. Usually the ruptures in the alliance are of two different types. First, there are ruptures where the patient um, is avoiding the interaction with the, with the therapist, it's like withdrawing the collaboration. And it's for example when um, the patient when we are talking about a specific topic and the patient shifts suddenly the topic to something else or start telling a story about someone that doesn't have nothing to do with what we are discussing uh, or for example when we ask a very specific question to the patient and he just answers something else and the other kind of ruptures are the ones where the patient confront directly and explicitly the therapist uh, for example criticizing the therapist, the therapy disagreeing on something the therapist said, uh, showing concern about the outcome of the treatment, etc. There is a manual published by Catherine Eubanks and colleagues that I would recommend you to, to check where all these types of ruptures are described, but it's aiming uh, especially for research, but I also think it could be a really great clinical resource. Um, Considering the video that we have done before regarding the context response psychotherapy integration, we can say that the ruptures in the alliance are markers for clinical adaptation. This means therapists should identify those ruptures, and once they identify those ruptures, it would be important that they can do something in terms of interventions in order to address these ruptures. Um, the ruptures in the alliance, as I told you, could be an obstacle for the treatment, something that would produce, for example, the patient leaving the uh, treatment, dropping out, or having even harming effects, uh, but also something that is very interesting and fundamental from ruptures in the alliance is that there are also a great clinical opportunity to produce changes at the interpersonal level in the patient. The ruptures in the alliance represent ways of coping uh, with stressful or painful situations for the patient. And having the opportunity to identify those ruptures and intervene on them could help us to produce corrective experiences in the patient and produce changes in their condition. 
So the resolution of the alliance, we can say that they can also be classified in two types. One of them would be just aiming to um, put the patient back on track. Um, this means to make him go back to what we were discussing. For example, if the patient shift the topic, bring the patient back to the topic we are discussing. Or if, for example, the patient misunderstood something that we were saying, maybe we can just explain um, the intervention or what we meant by what we said. But also the other type of, of resolutions are the ones that I think they are aiming um, to produce some therapeutic change. For example, something that we can do is to meta-communicate with the patient what we are feeling in those situations. So he can empathize with what other people could feel uh, in the moment of uh, those interpersonal behaviors. And also something that we can do is, for example, to show the different structures that the patient present as a stable interpersonal pattern within the therapeutic relationship, but also uh, with other relationships the patients have, for example, with their parents, with their friends, showing that those kind of behavior, it's something that it's um, common uh, in, in different relationships the patient has. Um, the, the possibility of intervening and resolving these ruptures had also has empirical evidence to support in terms of uh, their relationship with outcome. And there is a meta-analysis published a couple of years ago by uh, Eubanks and colleagues where they found that the resolution of ruptures in the alliance is significantly related with treatment outcome, showing even a stronger um, effect size than the one presented uh, in therapeutic alliance overall. So in synthesis, with this show is that the ruptures in the alliance is something that the therapist uh, should pay attention to, that should try to identify uh, and in case they raise, in case these ruptures appear, the therapist should need to address them first in order not to uh, have an obstacle for their treatment uh, and to being able to continue with the therapy. But second, and most important, I would say, in order to have a great opportunity to work with the patient regarding their stable uh, difficulties in the relationships and also um, having these um, possibility of producing changes that would um, improve patients' condition overall. Um, this is all for today. As I told you at the beginning, if you like the video, it would be great if you can send it to your colleagues, your friends, if you can also like it here and, of course, subscribe to our, to our channel. And something that I would like particularly uh, is if you can share your experience in the comments of the video, if you can tell us did you have these ruptures? Did you experience them? How did you feel in those situations that are usually hard for the therapist? Uh, what did you do in those situations? How do you address it? So it would be great if you can know your experience and also uh, if we can all share between us what we have done and we have experienced in those situations. So thank you very much and see you in the next video.